Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a cubic equation. Do you like cubic e equations? I do. And we have a formula. So anyways, we have 8x cubed equals 6x plus 1, and we're going to be solving for x values, at least one x value, right? Let's see how many values we have. Can you guess? All right, so I'll be presenting two methods, and one of the methods will probably be incomplete because it's going to be kind of long and boring, so bear with me. And that is called the first method. So if you're trying to solve a cubic equation, like I said earlier, there's a cubic formula. How do you use it? Great question. So we have something like a plus b cubed. From it, you can subtract 3ab times a plus b, which is from the binomial theorem, gives you a cubed plus b cubed. So here's how it works. We go ahead and replace a plus b with x. And then that gives us a cubic equation, x cubed minus 3abx equals a cubed plus b cubed. And we now know that x equals a plus b is a solution to this cubic equation. So if we can put our cubic equation in this form, then we know one of the solutions. That's not always the best one, but we'll get a solution at least, which is a good thing, okay? So let's go ahead and see how we can take advantage of that. We have 8x cubed minus 6x, sorry, I meant 8x cubed equals 6x plus 1, and then I will subtract 6x and isolate the constant because I want to have the constant on the right-hand side. That's how my identity works, okay? Not my real identity. I mean this identity, okay? That's not mine, by the way. Some, someone else found it. Some Italian guy, I guess, right? So, how do you put that in that form? Well, first of all, notice that the coefficient of x cubed should be 1. So we don't want the 8. So let's divide everything by 8. 6 divided by 8 is 3 fourths. And 1 divided by 8 is 1 eighth. Good. Now what are we going to do? Use the cubic formula. <laughs> Great. So in this case, you want 3ab to be 3 fourths, which means ab is going to be 1 fourth. I just totally ignore the negative signs because they both have it. And a cubed plus b cubed is supposed to be 1 eighth. That looks like a cubic system, but that's actually a quadratic system. You know why? Because if you multiply a and b, actually that's not what I meant, but anyways, I wouldn't mind an arrow. So cube both sides, and then uh, use substitution. However you do it, you're going to end up with some quadratic. Maybe we can isolate b cubed, right? And then this can be substituted here. See how that works with the arrows, yay. So let's go ahead and do it. a cubed multiplied by b cubed, which can be written as 1 over 8 minus a cubed, equals 1 over 64. And then when we distribute this, we're going to get something like 1 over 8a cubed minus a to the 6 power equals 1 over 64. Normally, I don't show this many steps, but, you know, at this time, I kind of feel generous. And I'm, I'm going to put everything on the right-hand side, so where a to the 6 is positive. And now this is my complete hexic formula, right? Okay, no, there's no hexic formula. There's not even a quintic formula. Can you imagine? It's awesome, right? So now we're going to use substitution, replace a cubed with c. That gives you c squared, and hopefully you can see what I'm talking about minus 1 over 8c. You see, that's a quadratic. Yay! And we can solve it using the quadratic formula, and then cube rooting will give you the value of a and b, and then a plus b is going to give you x, so on and so forth. Too much work, right? Obviously. That's why it's the first method. It's the boring one. It's the cubic formula. But guess what? Sometimes you have to use the formula. So if you have to, just use it. What do I mean by that? What I mean is the second method. I'm going to make that clear, okay, in a little bit. So, this is the cubic formula. Hopefully, you can take it from here. You know, just solve the quadratic and see if you can get the same answer. Because that's going to be interesting. That's why I do problems in many ways. Because my goal is to get different answers with different methods. And to be surprised. But that doesn't happen all the time, right? So, here's the second method. The second method focuses on something super duper fancy, something super duper important. By the way, I have another channel that focuses on complex numbers. It's called A plus BI. If you like complex numbers, go ahead and check it out. If not, still check it out because you might end up liking it and complex numbers are fun. They are unlike real numbers. They have uh, so many possibilities. But anyways, go ahead and check it out and let us know if you have any questions and let me know what you think. And continue with the second method. The reason why I mentioned that is because this channel particularly focuses on algebra, number theory, and trigonometry. I was doing geometry a long, long time ago, 
but I kind of lost my motivation because the geometry is not very popular in my audience. That's why. Anyways, so let's get back to this. Sorry, I, I digress. The second method is going to focus on something special. I said, what was the original problem though? 8x cubed equals 6x plus 1. What is the special formula? Okay, here's the thing. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 6x like before. Looks like I'm using the cubic formula, but I'm not. Because the next thing I'm going to do is probably going to blow your mind. If you haven't seen this before. Have you seen it before? Comment down below. So, I'm going to divide everything by 2. And if you haven't seen it before, trust me, this is going to be amazing. Now, why did I do that? Because I have a formula. Do you want me to share with you? Okay, great. So, the formula goes like this. Cosine and like... Where does that come from? I told you, I focus on trigonometry sometimes. Cosine of the 3x, triple angle formula, is equal to 4 cosine cubed x minus 3 cosine of x. So, maybe, you know what? I think I should change the x to alpha because uh, for our purposes, that should be the case, right? You see what I'm talking about? So this is going to be alpha and alpha. So this is called the triple angle for cosine. Why? Because you take an angle alpha, you can triple it. So in other words, if you know cosine of 30 degrees, you can find cosine of 90. That's not very helpful, is it? Maybe something like if you know cosine 10, you can find cosine 30. Again, it doesn't work. It's backwards, right? But anyways, you get the idea. If you know cosine 12, you can find cosine 30. See, how about this? It could be a variable too. That's fine. But this relates an angle and three times the same angle. That's why it's called the triple angle formula. There's a double angle formula too, but this one is more interesting. You know why? Look at this, and look at that, and take a hard look. Uh, do they look similar? S similar? Familiar? <laughs> okay, they are very similar. You know why? Because if you replace x with cosine alpha in the top equation, in this one, then you get this formula. Look at that. Replace x with cosine alpha, you get 4 cosine cubed alpha from here, minus 3 cosine alpha equals 1 half. And the left-hand side is exactly cosine of 3 theta, I mean alpha, and that gives you a trigonometric equation. So from polynomials to trigonometry, such an interesting transition, right? Did you, were you expecting it? If you were, let us know. If you weren't, still let us know. Always let us know what you think, okay? Your comments matter. Now, how do we solve this problem, though? Easy. Think about it. What, uh, the cosine of which angle is one half? If you think about the cosine being on the x-axis, like on the unit circle, you're talking about something like this, maybe 60 degrees or pi over 3 radians, right? Great. So that's the angle I'm looking for because this is one half and this is root 3 over 2. By the way, this is longer, this is shorter. You should know those values because this is pretty much the whole unit circle. And there's another one which is 45, but that's easy because it's always the diagonal, the bisector. Make sense? So here's what we can do. Replace one half with cosine of pi over 3 and ta-da! From here you get 3 alpha equals pi over 3 and alpha equals pi over 9, which is 20 degrees. Is that it? Nope. You have to remember something. Always add multiples of 2 pi n. With complex numbers, you have 2 pi n i. You see, real and complex world together. Great. So, that's a plus b i, by the way. Don't forget to check it out, okay? So, we have this, and n is an integer. I usually forget to say that, but hopefully you get it. Now, divide everything by 3. Ta -da -da -da. This is where adding 2 pi n is important because now you're not just adding multiples of 2 pi, you're adding multiples of 2 pi over 3, which will definitely make a difference. For example, if n is equal to 0, you're going to add pi over 9. If n is equal to 1, you're going to be adding 6 pi over 9, which is going to give you 7 pi over 9, and then you're going to get 13 pi over 9. And finally, when you use n equals 3, that'll be adding 2 pi. Did I use 3? Wait. I use 0, 1, 2. There should be one more, right? Is there? No, I don't think so. There's only three. Okay, fine. There's only three solutions that come from it. But that's not the only thing because in the fourth quadrant, cosine can only be cosine can also be one half, but that's negative pi over three. Or you can write it as let me see. Instead of negative pi over three, I can write two pi minus pi over three, which is five pi over three, right? plus 2 pi k. If you don't want to use the same integer, it doesn't matter, no big deal. They're just dummy variables. 
pi, 5 pi over 9 plus 2 pi k over 3. And for this one, I want you to go ahead and replace k with 0, 1, and 2 to find the values, but that's going to give you all the, all the solutions. That's pretty much it. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to check out A plus B I. And bye-bye.